This week, we're in a market town called Hinkley in Leicestershire, and we are on the hunt for a property deal. We're heading to check out a three bedroom end terrace auction property. And in this video, we'll walk you through how we'd assess this property for a potential flip. That means buying it, renovating, and then selling it for a profit. We'll be looking at the condition, location, and potential ROI, which stands for return on investment. And if you're new here, I'm AK. And I'm Leah. And this is our channel where we talk about property, business, and working together as a couple. This property is in the auction with a guide price of £69,000. So today we're going to look at how much profit we could make if we were to buy this and flip this house. Okay, so we're outside the property now and we're having a look at the exterior. We're talking about the curbside appeal. So when somebody walks up to a property, if they're going to buy it, they need to be impressed by what they see from the outside. Somebody said that buyers make their decision in the first eight seconds of seeing a property. I'm not sure if that is true. Take from that what you will. But overall, the first impressions of this property are that it is tired. It needs some attention from the outside and obviously the inside as well, which you're going to see in a second. One thing to notice about this property is that there is no driveway. So lots of the neighbors have parked their car right outside the house. Whereas with this property, there is this huge tree right in front uh, as well as a bus stop and there is no drop curb. So this means that in order for people to park their car on the driveway, we would need to completely redo this front garden, have block paving, drop the curb and allow access for the cars to come in front of the house. As you can see, Nextdoor has got the drop curb and cars park in front of it, and they sold theirs last year for 220,000. One of the first things we also look at when we get to any property is the roof. We're looking for any cracked, loose, missing tiles, because things like this can lead to leaks and expensive repairs. Another thing we're looking at as we're outside the property is the windows. We want to see the state of the double glazing, if it is even double glazed to begin with. There's a lot of condensation that you can see here on this window. And overall, from assessing from the outside, it does look like all of these windows would need to be replaced. They're not in good condition. So from the outside, you can see that the fascia is very tired. It looks like it needs a really good lick of paint. It needs freshening up here. So that would be something you'd factor into this refurb as well. Now heading inside, very narrow doorway. This would absolutely need to be replaced. I'm not sure how we would get any furniture inside. So we just about fit in there ourselves. Because there were some other people viewing the property, we decided to start upstairs so that not to get in their way. AK is just having a look there at the gas and electricity meters. So heading upstairs now, and as I've seen online from the virtual viewing, there are three bedrooms to this property. So let's start in the biggest bedroom. On first impressions, I felt like this room looked a lot bigger online than it does in real life. So it was really great to see the space because actually it was quite small. I would describe this as a small double. If you've watched our other videos, you'll know that we like to try and add on suites where possible. But this space was a lot smaller in real life than it looks in video. We are filming this on a wide angle lens. So we decided that actually this bedroom would be best without any ensuite. Then moving into the second biggest room, another small double. The windows again would need replacing. And as you can see, those small little vents up there, we weren't sure what they were to begin with. I've never seen vents that look like that in old properties. With the windows, you'll notice that they haven't replaced them for double glazing. They've just put this cheap covering in front of what was previously single glazed windows. So all of that would need to be replaced with proper double glazing. So the biggest cost here would be windows. We need to strip out all the wallpaper, assess the walls underneath, replaster, modernize everywhere. And obviously a lot of the good stuff will be done with dressing and staging. Now into the tiny box room. This really is not big enough to be a bedroom by today's standards. So we do think we would turn this room into a family bathroom. I think it would potentially get away with being a small nursery, but then if we did do that, we'd be leaving the bathroom downstairs, which is quite a dated thing in the UK, having this like downstairs bathroom rather than having it upstairs. We really don't wanna do that. So the main plan of action with this flip would be to turn this into a bathroom. Some plumbing work would be needed upstairs, which is never a problem. And now heading down the stairs, which were very narrow and very steep because this is a very old house. Just noticing the original flooring underneath. 
and into the living room it looks like somebody has pulled away one of the floorboards so we can now assess the state of the joists underneath to see if they're rotten see if there's any problems underneath you might remember from one of our previous refurbs we had some really rotten floor joists and we had to replace them it was quite expensive to replace them all these ones didn't look rotten but you can see that underneath the suspended floor there is no insulation that could be improved and that would also improve the energy efficiency of the property now moving into the kitchen super old kitchen i actually have a little bit of a soft spot for all these colors because we don't use color like this anymore this was the family bathroom which is tiny i believe that we would remove all of this we would actually just keep a downstairs wc so just the loo we plan to knock through and make a very big open plan kitchen diner so this would be a back to brick space where we would completely reinvent the kitchen area. People like big kitchens now, big social kitchens. Now we move into this conservatory. This has got potential to be part of the kitchen and to be a really beautiful extended space. Obviously that would come at a cost. So we'd speak to our builder about the cost of extending the kitchen this way and having this as a really beautiful open plan space. Another idea would to be to change this area into a sort of a utility area where there's washing machine, laundry, storage, the house is lacking storage. So just more cabinets and space saving solutions for this small end terrace property. So as we're walking around, we're talking about options and then we headed outside into the garden. The main intention of this was to actually see the roof from the back and also to see what the state of the garden was because when it comes to a flip, people want to be impressed by the garden. So as you can see, there is a lot of clearance that would need to be done. That shed needs to be removed and quite a few thousand really needs to be spent on this garden to really tidy it up, make it nice and presentable so that a family walk around this property and go, I really wanna spend time in this garden. This is just not gonna work for a flip. It needs to have that curbside appeal perhaps a little outdoor patio area with some seating and the staging and dressing would really help dress the garden to a nice space where you'd want to spend time, maybe get a little barbecue out there. You can really start to imagine it. Looking at the roof, we didn't see any major issues at all, nothing that was obvious, but of course, it's always worth going into the loft space as well to see if you can see any light coming through, see any obvious gaps in the roof, because then you'll get an idea if there's been any leaks. Also, the fencing doesn't look too bad on this property, probably just some paint needed to just jazz that up and tidy it up a little bit. So before I've even got to this property and before we've walked around, I've been on property data doing my area research. So what I do is I type in the postcode and then what I do is I actually expand the area so I can get more data points and make it worth my while on property data for anyone who doesn't use property data you get a certain amount of credits per month so to do this sort of research requires me to use one credit so i like to expand the area so i can make the most of those credits and then what i can look at is sold prices in the area so i can zoom in exactly on that street and see comparables what they sold for so i can see here on neighboring streets this one that I've opened, for example, sold for £200,000 on Tudor Road. It will say the date that it sold. I can see the floor plan upstairs. I can see it's slightly bigger than the property we're looking at. I can see another house here, which is 185000 which is on a neighbouring street. So it's always good to have a look at what's selling in the area to give you a ceiling price of the maximum value of the property that you're looking at. If you were to decide to rent this property and not flip it, you can also see on property data, the average rent for a two bed, average rent for a three bed in the area and the yield. You can also see how that compares with HMO numbers, houses of multiple occupancy, where you rent out each room on a separate AST. Next up, we can see the growth price in the area. So we can see the growth in the last five years on this upward curve. It has started to drop a little bit, which you've probably seen lately, that house prices are starting to drop a little bit due to rising interest rates. Next up, I can see the activities, the amount of sales in the month and the stock. There's so much area research you can do. For example, you can even look at the schools in the area and how they're rated. So I can see that there's three good schools in this area. One of them is rated outstanding, which is a really amazing pull for families that are always searching for best schools to send their children to. So these are all the kind of things you wanna be looking at if you're flipping a house because you need to put yourself in the shoes of the buyer and ask yourself, what are they looking for? 
our builder was saying something that we really agree with, which is big newly refurbished kitchens and newly refurbished bathrooms are a big, big yes for buyers because they really don't want to do expensive works themselves especially when it comes to like extensions, which are expensive. So anything that's already been extended and modernized is a major plus. So that's just a little bit of how I use property data to analyze a deal like this. If you are interested in using it, there is a link in our description, which you and I can both share 150 pounds in credit on property data. So that is an affiliate link. Now we've finished looking at the property, we're heading back home and we're going to look at the numbers. We have put in a purchase price for this property at £90,000. Before we discuss why we've done that, let's go through the rest of the numbers first and we'll explain those. So let's start with the works for this project, the refurbishment. After talking to our builder and including contingency, we're estimating about £60,000 in order to do this project. The next line item is professional fees. There is a auction administration fee, including VAT, and that comes in at £1,680. You should always read the legal pack and any T's and C's that come with the auction house that you're buying from. Usually I'll leave that up to Leah to do all that sort of amazing stuff. Stamp duty here is £2,700. And that's assuming, again, that the purchase price is £90,000. It's 3% of the purchase price if you're buying in a limited company, which is our buying position. If you don't own any property, you're buying in your personal names, then you could be paying zero stamp duty. But it's best if you check on the government website because this can change if you're a non-UK resident. And there's loads of other things that could change stamp duty calculation. So make sure you work that out before putting it in your spreadsheet. The next cost here is legal fees and this is solicitors and things like that. So we've put that in at 2,500 and that's based on previous deals that we've done before. And that's inclusive of VAT. Most solicitors do charge VAT. Broker fee has been put in at zero because we are assuming that this is a cash purchase and that there's no lending due to the speed of buying at auction. Usually you have to complete in 30 days. With this auction, the legal pack said that you have to complete in 42 days. So that's a little bit more rare. Also, the valuation here is at zero because we're not sending a surveyor around to value the property. It's on an auction. This would be different if it was not an auction property. Now insurance. Now this is pretty high. So let's talk about insurance. This looks like a significant cost here. We're basing this off some of our most recent insurance quotes that we've been getting for some of our properties. So this is not gonna be exact, but it's just to give us a bit of an estimate. And for me personally, I always like to over egg the numbers just to give myself even more contingency when I'm looking at them. And that's in at 6,000 pounds. So that's averaging around about 500 pounds a month for the duration of this project. And we're giving ourselves 12 months to do this. 12 months there to buy it, refurbish it and time to sell it as well. And I think in this market specifically right now, that's probably a wise thing to do as well. It's just a little bit slower at the moment. Yeah, things aren't selling in two weeks anymore. No. So the next line below is holding costs. Holding costs don't directly go into the refurbishment, but they're part of owning the property for the time that you own it but they don't contribute towards the refurbishment. So for this one, I've put in 12 months of council tax and cost of utilities. So minimal use of electricity, gas, water. And I worked out the council tax by going on the local council website and it came out at 135 pounds per month. And then I factored in a couple of hundred pounds for bills for the year, assuming that nobody's living there, obviously. So as you can see, the total investment for this project would be £164,496. During the area research, we spoke about a realistic sale price of £200,000. So we're not over-egging it too much to what Nextdoor sold for, which was £220,000. And we're not going quite as low as what a non-done-up property on the same street went for in the 180s. A realistic sale price of £200,000 would leave us with a flip profit of just over £30,000 and an ROI, which means return on investment of 18.24%. There's just a couple of other costs as well to consider when you're coming to sell the property. In this case, agent fees, usually between 1 and 2% of the cost of the sale. And in this case, we've put £3,000 if we were to sell this property on the back end at £200,000. Of course, as well, the legal fees, the solicitors that you have to pay for when you come to sell the property, in this case, £2,500 as well. So all of that is baked into the flip profit and the ROI that Leah's just mentioned there. 
18.24% is quite a good ROI. I would be super happy because that will leave us with £30,000 profit in doing that deal, which I'm sure most of you agree is a decent return on your investment there. Some people ask what is a good profit or what is a good return on investment for a flip and the reason is it depends the more potential profit that you make in a deal then the more room for error that you potentially have in a deal so Leah and I always say that we want to be aiming for a minimum of £30,000 profit because like we've learned along the way and you've seen in many of our videos there is always things to consider there's always things that go wrong you know not always squatters or anything like that Check out our squatter series if you haven't seen that. But there's always things that go wrong. And so for us, we look at that minimum threshold of £30,000 profit when we look at a deal like this. For you, it might be different. Also, it depends as well if you're in the trades and you can do your own refurbishment or your DIY, for example, then it's potentially going to leave you more profit there as well. Exactly. We also spoke to another builder who said that that refurbishment wouldn't cost them more than £40,000, but obviously they'd be doing all the work themselves with their own team at their own time expense. So that's just another thing to consider is that we are not DIYers, we are outsourcing the build and that comes at a cost, which will always eat into the ROI too. Really good point. If you have enjoyed this video, then please give us a big like. We post videos every single week and subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. And if you would like to work with us, then there is a link in the description below. Please click that and I will get back to you personally. Thanks everyone. See you next time. See ya. Bye. Bye.